In my line of work, presenting the highest quality image is key. Start building your website today at squarespace.com. Use the offer code CARL to get a 10% discount. I'm Carl Taylor, and this is my Squarespace. So a lot of you have been contacting us and emailing us and asking about how and which tripods I use and how I maintain them. So I was gonna give you a little bit of a run through of my two favorite tripods, the ones I use most often. Um, this one here is a really heavy duty Manfrotto. Uh, this is the 058 tripod. Uh, it weighs about six or seven kilos. And then by the time you add the weight of the head on as well, it's a very heavy tripod to carry around. But I really love this tripod for landscape work because quite often I'm out and I'm shooting when it's really windy or stormy and you need something rock solid to keep that camera in position. Now, the other great Great thing about this tripod is these release buttons for the legs. If I just push that button in, I can adjust the height of the leg. I push them all in simultaneously. I can adjust the height of the tripod and I can push the release button to release the leg out as well. So it means that when you're trying to level your tripod out ready for your shot, you've got this really easy control operation just with your fingers at the top, which make it a lot quicker than say working with one of these type tripods, which has the clip release buttons. Now these clip release buttons means it's very slow, very arduous to actually position your tripod, tripod and get it level. Um, so I don't really like these too much, but then in saying that, having some tripod to work with is much better than no tripod at all. Um, one of my other favourite tripods is this one. This is also a Manfrotto. This is the Neotech and this has a similar system. It's got a push button at the top and it allows me to push the tripod legs in and out. And it also means that when I'm on uneven ground like I am now, I can push the leg button in, push it in at the top, adjust the height, move it around, different positions. It's also got uh, these extension buttons here where if you click the button down, let me just pull, pull that in, means you can pull the legs right out wide and it allows you to get this tripod at a very low angle. Got to be a little bit careful, got some waves coming in behind me here, I don't want to get the camera wet or damaged. Now, talking of water and damage, <laughs> Talking of water and damage, that's one of the things you've got to look out for with these tripods. It's really difficult to maintain them because they're made of metal, they do corrode. You get salt water, you get sand, you get grit, you get all sorts of stuff in the tripod and it does damage them. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to show you back at the studio how I maintain the tripods to keep them in good working order. Other things we're going to look at is just a quick look at the tripod heads. Here's what I've got is a three-way head. So basically I've got a control here on the uh, horizontal axis, a control on the vertical, and a control on that direction as well if I want to flip the camera from landscape over into uh, portrait uh, uh, position. Now on this one is a slightly different head. This has got a ball head which means uh, you rotate the camera position around on a ball and then you lock the position like so. So this can actually be quite a quick way of working um, but you need to be careful that the ball head is strong enough to take the weight of your camera. Um, this ball head is very good. I can take this camera off of here and it would even handle the weight of uh, this heavy camera with this heavy lens on it. Now one of the other great things about the uh, Manfrotto tripods and many of the tripods you can find are these quick release plates. It means that you can just quick latch the camera on to the tripod head, simply push that across, lock it down and then it's fixed in possession and then you know that it's nice and secure and it's steady. If you've got a problem, big waves coming or something's going to happen, quick release it, take it off, get out of the way if necessary. So what we've got to make sure is we rinse the tripods. Now, I haven't done these yesterday because it was dark and it was late and I was cold and wet. So uh, they probably already seized up a little bit now. Um, so it's really important that we give these a good rinse out. So what I normally do is extend the legs right out on the tripods and then basically just got to get them under the tap 
run them under fresh water and just give them a good rinse out so the whole thing is nice and clean. Get rid of all that salt water off of those legs and the tripod. What we need to do now to maintain that tripod and keep it in good working order is add some of this WD-40 stuff. Now this is great, it's a lubricant, uh, an oil type uh, protection, it uh, forms a moisture barrier, keeps the moisture out and it also uh, lubricates the tripod so that the legs carry on working. Now you can apply it directly just by spraying it onto the legs uh, but I usually just use a bit of cloth or tissue paper, spray it onto the tissue paper and then give the legs a good wipe down all over. You need to make sure you spray it into the joints, uh, all the pieces that came into contact with salt water, moisture, even lubricating around the head of the tripod is useful as well. Uh, the same on the smaller tripod, on the ball head, all around the leg joints, everything like that. Now what you'll notice on my tripod here is that there are already uh, bits of corrosion starting to form. If you have a look this side you can see that there's a lot of uh, rust coming into the tripod in here. Now this tripod is 10 years old um, and it's still going strong, uh, really love this tripod, been using it for many years. But when you start to see this uh, sort of thing happening, get yourself one of these, a little bit of a uh, wire wool, um, this is just a dish cloth wire wool type uh, cleaning cloth and just give that a rub, look at that, and that's taken all of that uh, rust away and that corrosion off of there so that you stop it from spreading. Once you've got all of those legs cleaned up, give them a another wipe down, then give them another wipe down with the WD-40 to make sure they're all smooth and working. Now if you do that, you'll keep your tripod in pretty good order so that it works for many years no matter whether you throw it in the sea over and over again. Now another thing to point out, I didn't have the legs fully extended when uh, you were seeing uh, the tripod in action yesterday, here I've got the legs fully extended, you can see that it's a very tall tripod, much higher than me, even has a further extension here with uh, uh, the raise up mechanism on that part there. Now it's not often that you'll need to use the tripod in this height but this is a commercial tripod and often if I'm doing a shoot and I need to get up a step ladder I can still have the camera on a solid platform raised up or sometimes you find you're working on a landscape shot where you're up on a higher rock and the ground is lower be uh, down beneath you so having that extended height on the tripod is great but as I said this is a very heavy tripod difficult to carry around so you have to be committed and be prepared to lug this heavy tripod around if, uh, if you want to. Um, the other option is to go for this lovely Neotech tripod, you can see it's nowhere near as tall, that's it at full height extension there, obviously you've got a little bit of extra extension with the uh, column that you can raise up there but it only really going to be at working height um, at standing height only but still a fantastic tripod quite stable very sturdy not as stable as this which is fantastic in stormy conditions but pretty good tripod overall so that's it on the maintenance you've seen how we use them you've seen my favorites and you see how you keep them in working order